You should not drink beer while using a hammer. That's true. How did we introduce the screwdrivers? We didn't. Okay, good. I think that was a great intro. I think mm -hmm. we nailed it. Welcome to our tool series and our episode about hammers. Oh, I got it. We nailed it. So was, <laughs> was that not a, was that no pun intended? That was, uh. It was totally intended. Again, this is our series about tools where we're going to talk about the absolute basics of what you need to know about tools. Some tools that you probably already have seen or familiar with. Today, in this video, we're going to be talking about hammers. Hammers. And again, just as a disclaimer, before we get started, when you're working on projects with whatever tool, make sure that you have proper safety equipment. Safety glasses, gloves, and do not drink beer. We're going to talk about a couple different kinds of hammers today that you might be familiar with. There are many more varieties of hammers than what I have available, but I've got three, four pretty good ones here. So I'm going to cover them and what their basic uses are, just so you get an understanding. And he's yeah. right. I mean, there are hammers for everything, all sorts of shapes and sizes. The more know. specialized your profession, if you're using a hammer, yeah, carpentry the more hammers, hammers, drywall hammers. There's mallets. There's there's blacksmithing hammers there's roofing hammers, roofing hammers framing like hammers it's, you know it, it's it's um and, and it's it's cliche but you got to have the right tool for the job and and the most common tool that most uh people that are not in a specialized profession are going to want to have is going to be a 16 ounce uh hammer okay now this is uh i say that because that's that's specifically what it says right there 16 ounces 16 ounces 16 ounces Right, this is the most common size of hammer that will get most jobs done. This is specifically a claw hammer, and it's called that because of this claw on the back end, which is used as a prying tool and is used for removing nails from projects. Uh, hammers are predominantly used for hammering in nails. They can also be used for percussive maintenance in situations where you really just need to knock something into position, but most of the time, it's for putting in nails. Now this larger hammer here on this end, this is a framing hammer. And you can tell that it's that because it's one, it's longer, right? It's also 20 ounces, so it's a heavier head. And it's got this waffle face here to it, which helps when uh, the hammer is being struck into things, keeps the, the hammer head from sliding off of the nail, especially when you're hammering things in an angle. Whereas your 16 ounce hammers usually have a flat face. If you're only gonna use a hammer occasionally, though, I really recommend picking up something smaller than that. Maybe this is, I don't know the exact weight on this, but it's like probably a 12 ounce hammer. This is great for picture hanging, for uh, light home repair, for finishing nails as well, when you have a really, uh, the smaller gauge nails, which if you hit them with a big hammer, they're just going to bend. Uh, and this one's nice because it's got a plastic rubberized kind of top on it. So when you're using it as a pry tool, it's not going to mar the surface of whatever it's touching. Whereas these guys, you want to really put in like a, a piece of sacrificial wood or something in between to give you more leverage and to protect the surface that it's going up against. Now, the one kind of specialized tool that I have here that I really enjoy is a dead blow hammer. That's a cool name, but the reason it's called dead blow hammer is because it's basically, it's filled with BBs. Well, maybe you can hear that. And what happens is when you hit it on a surface, it doesn't bounce because all of the beads in there fall and it applies all of its pressure. This is my rubber mallet solution, right? A rubber mallet, you hit something with it, it can bounce. The dead blow hammer won't. And so it's a little bit safer and it's a little bit more effective in applying the force to the end, end product. Now, a hammer is basically a lever with a weight on the end of it. From a physics Simple perspective, machines. the simplest machines is the lever, right? Now this is used in two ways. One, in raising up the weight and lowering it down to apply force at that hammer head, right? You're not using your wrist to do this. You use the whole arm motion or at least an elbow strike. 
motion. But the weight of the hammerhead and the length of that lever arm are what's really applying that force. So this 16 ounce hammer is gonna apply a lot less force than this longer 20 ounce hammer. And so you're gonna use bigger nails with this. Or you're gonna use this hammer for bigger nails. Um, but it's also a lever in that sense is being used as a pry bar, right? Of getting things out of wood if you need to. There is another tool I wanna to briefly mention, which is this pry bar which is useful for when you really need to get things out of, of bad situations. You'll notice it's a little bit, it's about the same length Look as... Up, show people. Yeah. It's about the same length as that 16 ounce hammer. It'll fit in your tool bag. Um, but the points on this is a little bit finer. It's got a wider, flatter surface for applying uh, that leverage through. And really it's going to be better purpose built for that job. But... The hammers, again, they come with that claw in there for doing that, that leverage action. And they work in tandem. You, you basically hit the end of the, the pry bar uh, to, to either wedge further in or to actually get whatever you need out. Yep. Um, yeah, so that's, that's Joe. What's a round-headed hammer? The round-headed hammers that uh -huh. you see that's got that ball in the one hand? Uh -huh. It's a ball-peen hammer. Jason this, wanted me to say peen. This is my peen joke. <laughs> oh, what are, what are ball peens used for? Just while we have a, it. A ball peen hammer, and maybe I'll find a picture of one and put into the video here because I, I don't have one. Um, Not with me right now. But... A ball peen hammer will be used for light metal work, for, for dishing things out where you hit it and make big round shapes into it, um, or for flattening. Steel drums. Um, for flattening wires know. for jewelry and stuff like that. Okay. Um, or for. for um, uh, metal work like you might have on a car to repair, you know, to make a, a, mm -hmm. a piece of angle iron bend the way you want. Not angle iron, but uh, flashing or something like that bend the way you want. So light metal working. Yeah, cold, cold metal working. You can get all kinds of hammers. You get blacksmith's hammers. You get sledgeham sledgehammers. Oh, we got a sledgehammer. <laughs> sledgehammer. Ten pounds of steel. Now, what's fun about the sledgehammer is it's good for, you know, destroying things. Hardcore wrestling, too. But if you wanted to, you could also set it up and use it as an anvil. Potentially. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. By the way, you should probably never hit metal against metal. You just did it. Um, so, there's yeah. a whole Mythbusters episode about that. Oh, I don't know. Uh, oh, one more thing I wanted to say. Okay. Um, the 16 ounce hammers, they come in a couple of varieties of handles. Materials. Yes, handles. That's right. That's, we should cover that. So this one is a wooden handle. This one is a polycarbonate plastic, maybe a rubberized grip handle. And this one is a steel handle with a rubber grip on it. They also have ones that have a leather grip on mm -hmm. them too. I don't have any of those right here. Um, that's purely up to your personal preference. The goal of the hammer, uh, uh, the goal of the handle on the hammer is to provide your lever arm as well as to make your hand comfortable and provide shock absorbency so you don't hurt your wrist. Some people prefer the wood handles, though they have a tendency to be damaged mm -hmm. over time and you need maybe a little more care into them. The polycarbonate ones tend to have a little bit more of a shock to them. And they've got a better, you know, you get a better grip on some of the synthetic, uh, some of the synthetic... Yeah, and and some of the leather, uh, their leather handles. Wooden hammers are, are. I've always found them pretty hard to handle. <laughs> especially, um, especially if you've been working outside and it's hot. Yeah, and, and you know your hands get slippery. They get tired. You've been you've been banging away all day. The, the, it's it's like sitting in a wooden chair all day. You you, you want to cushion once in a while. Yeah. So whatever handle material you pick, they're all good. But you know there'll be different preferences. It, it, it's there's not one that's better than the other. There's one that's good for you. Um, so, thank you for watching. This was our episode about hammers. Stay tuned for more tool videos. And as always, do good. And be good. Peen.